person, there's a couple of them that were asking that you made this prediction that within like 15 years, we were like 50% uh, chance that we would uh, be out of the death spiral that is longevity. How do you see, how do you see where we are today? And how do you see Lev fitting into accelerating that timeline? So yeah, 15 years is my current prediction. I didn't go as low as 15 years until a year or two ago. Um, uh, but yeah, 20 years ago, I was saying 25 years, which means that we've only gone half as fast as I would have liked. However, the good news is if you divide those 20 years into two parts, then for very much the reasons I was giving a moment ago, the financial constraints, there was a lot of slippage in the first 10 years, and there's been almost no slippage in the next 10, in the last 10. So um, I, I'm feeling pretty good about my predictions now. And it's not just the longevity escape velocity milestone. Um, I've also for a long time been talking about this other milestone in laboratory work, which is for mice, you know, talking this thing called robust mouse rejuvenation which is not defined as, you know, living long enough to live forever, because that's much harder in a short lived organism than it is in a long lived organism like humans. In fact, I very much doubt that we'll ever reach longevity escape velocity for mice. Um, but still, it's uh, I set the numbers in terms of how much postponement of aging we would need, starting in middle age. Um, so as to be like enough to impress my colleagues in academia. You know, because that's really what matters. At the end of the day, the public don't listen to me. They listen to Oprah Winfrey and her ilk. Mm. And she got where she is today by keeping a finger on the pulse and getting a good sense of the expert consensus in a particular area. So, of course, I'm just one person. If the bulk of my more vocal colleagues, you know, the people like David Sinclair and George Church and, and Ned Barzilai and Brian Kennedy and so on, if they were coming out and saying the same thing as me, basically, maybe not quite as optimistically, but saying at least, you know, yes, we're in striking distance, then it's going to change the whole um, structure of um, how, this is on, how, how we go about this, this, this thing overnight it's going to become a proper war on aging, uh, you know, with, with really, really big government money and, you know, everyone being focused on it, same as, um, you know, same as the real war, really. Um, and uh, so that's what I want to bring about. And that, again, like the time frame has slipped, of course. I, originally, I said 10 years, and it's obviously more than 10 years already. Um, but now I think it's only three or four years. And a large part of why I think that is because a lot of the components of, are in place. We've got a lot of therapies that have been applied to mice in middle age and individually have postponed aging a bit. And so our flagship project at my new foundation, LEV Foundation, is to put a bunch of those things together. Yeah. And, you know, that's why three weeks ago I bought a thousand mice. And um, you know, in a month and a half or so, we'll be starting the experiment for, in earnest. Um, four different interventions, diverse different types of damage repair um, in various combinations. And of course, we shall see what happens. And this will be the first round of a rolling research program in which we, you know, take another thousand mice and do a bunch of different things to them and so on until we get there. But we are pretty hopeful. Our mice will be 18 months old when we start treating them. And these will be a nice strain of mice that would normally live about another year, year and a bit after that. Um, we want to extend that by a further year, and I'm optimistic. Yeah, it sounds really exciting, and um, I don't know if you're a fan of Hitchhiker 